All right, welcome into episode two of Spill the Tea, the golf podcast about everything around golf, but not exactly golf, but kind of the things around golf. So yeah, let's just dive right into it. Amy Rogers here alongside my friend, Anna Jackson, and we are going to be focused on all the exciting things happening in the game of golf, especially the women's side of the game. And it doesn't get much more exciting than the Solheim Cup. But before we dive into it, Anna, what have you been up to? Let's catch up. I, I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. I know. Well, first of all, hello. It's lovely to be reunited. It's been way too long for episode two of Spill the Tea to come yes, out. So I'm yes. just pleased that we're back in action. And you're right, September 2023. Hello. Such great golf. Solheim Cup directly followed by the Ryder Cup. Uh, it's going to be an epic two weeks. But yeah, so it's been, what, a couple of months. We last podded just before the U.S. Uh, Women's Open at Pebble Beach, which was yes. always going to be an amazing week. And it truly was. We did, I mean, I was up on the desk with live from, I think we did 40 hours of live TV that week, which was uh Amazing. We had incredible guests. Of course, there was the big farewell to Michelle Wee West and Annika Sorenstam and Alison Corpus got it done. Um, she's going to be an absolute force on the Solheim Cup team, by the way, as a rookie. Um, so yeah, no, it's been great. I popped home for a couple of weeks with Max and we saw um, we saw the family. Maxi turned two, which, you know, Aww. he's got absolutely no idea that he had a lovely party, but I had a great <laughs> time and had lots of champagne. So that's fine. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and now, now here we are kind of getting, getting geared up for so high. Where have you been, Amy Rogers? Yeah, it was really crazy through the spring. Like May, June, July was just nuts. I had nine weeks stretch, nine weeks straight stretch, either wow. covering events on site or remotely. So finally, after the US Women's Open, things kind of started to slow down a bit, able to catch my breath. I just had one more event. I went up to Minnesota to cover the PGA tour, uh, the 3M open. And then, yeah, I've just basically been off since then. So a couple of weeks to just catch up with the family in the middle of that crazy nine week stretch, we actually had moved. <laughs> We'd oh, been wow. building a house for like over a year. And of course, when is it done in the middle of the busiest time of our lives? So that's, stressful. Um, yeah, it's been crazy. So the last month, just being able to just settle in, wake up and know where I am. Mm -hmm, <laughs> I hate mm -hmm. when that happens. You're like, I don't know where I am, what is going on. Um, so just to get comfortable in my own home and be able to unpack, order some furniture, uh, just settle in has been nice. But now I'm kind of, you know, rested, ready to get back out there, ready to, you know, start uh, covering golf again, start traveling again. It's like you start getting that itch after you a do. while. You do you do. feel that? Like you just are like, it hasn't been that long, but you just want to get back out there again. So a hundred percent. I feel like, you know, if, if, if everything I had to give in this life was like a liter of water, I had 500 milliliters in my work cup, 500 milliliters in my family cup. <laughs> The work cup gets so full, but then the family cup gets empty. And then yes. you try to fill up the family cup, but then the work cup gets a little bit empty. Trying to keep the balance and trying to keep everything fulfilled at one time is physically impossible for all the working mums out there. Teaser, Stacey Lewis, working mum, joining us shortly. Um, but yeah, it is tough. It is tough. And may I add, Amy Rogers, not only did you move house and all of this, but <laughs> we had an actual sighting, an official reach out from none other than Michael Bolton on our Spill the Tea Twitter. And for anybody who listened to the first <laughs> podcast, you will understand why this is such a big deal. This is huge. Okay, we have to catch people up on what happened, how this developed. This is at the US Women's Open, a podcast we had uh, recorded, our first one, calling out Michael Bolton, Anna's undying love for Michael Bolton, um, and wanting to, of course, meet him someday mm. to maybe even play golf with him. So Fantasy we're at the football. U.S. Women's. That's all. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Fancy football. So we're at the U.S. Women's Open. We had left for the day. I had just gotten back to my room and I hopped on Twitter. It said I had some new followers and I scroll down and it is none other than Michael Bolton. And I, so I, I was like, oh my God, he must know about the podcast. How? So I immediately How? go to Anna's account and I see that he is following her too. So I quickly <laughs> send her a text and I'm like, oh my God, Michael Bolton has found us. What were you thinking when I sent you <laughs> that text? So uh, I was up with our uh, with good friend, Alex Russell, another Golf Channel colleague. And we were just, we were sat in a buggy. I think we were sat outside merch and I picked up your message and I was like, Oh, and also Alex Russell is our talent booker. So if anybody's going to get anyone on the show, it's going to be Alex Russell. I was, and I said, oh, my. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my God. 
Michael Bolton has listened to the podcast, people, and he follows us on Twitter. Now, I realize this is really, really sad. For most people listening to this, they will just think I'm truly pathetic. But everybody has got their guilty pleasure in life yes. for no rhyme or reason. Yes. And Michael Bolton is mine. So there we are. And we're thinking, right, we're getting him on the show. We're doing a Michael po- Bolton special. We're doing a tea time with Anna and Bolton. And they're going to go and play 18 holes together. We have reached out to Camp Bolton. We are still awaiting a reply. But I mean, in terms of the next stage of my journey in life and (laughs) my sort of relationship with Michael Bolton, this is a huge step forward, Amy Rogers. Yeah, this is another level. I mean, how many people actually get to be acknowledged by this person that they've put on this pedestal, that they've idolized, that they, I'm sure, dreamt about? (laughs) I mean, sure, it's not like we're talking Beyonce here. We're not talking Jay-Z and sort of global megastars who would really very rarely recognize your existence. I'm 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 picking at a low apple here with Michael Bolton, but hey, still don't cut was... yourself short. Back in the day, True. Michael Bolton was like Beyonce. You know, was maybe he? he's not anymore. He I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to boost you a little bit. <laughs> just, uh... And actually, that reminds me in the previous pod as well, we set ourselves a little sort of U.S. Women's Open mission, didn't we? With your yeah. heartbeat and, you know, minor celebrity crush, Clint Eastwood. You were meant to be getting yourself with him. What happened with that? I never did see Clint. He never materialized during the week. Oh, that's the prime thing. <laughs> what is with us in like elderly men? I don't understand the obsession. I don't know. It's weird. It is kind of weird. Of all the people that we could choose who, you know, know. play in these pro-ams, who, you know, you're Justin Timberlake, you're Nell Horrans, and there you are no. looking for Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> I did, however, see uh, Jim Nance, who's also a resident out at Pebble Beach. I was driving back down from the compound to the golf course um, after one of the rounds to do some interviews. And it was like one of those moments you're like driving by, you pass the person in the cart and like you see this guy like smile and look over and you're like, oh, yeah, he looks really familiar. And then after the fact, you realize like, oh, that was Jim Nance just like driving by. So yeah, I think Jim is pretty synonymous with Pebble, isn't he? He's got his own sort of branded Jim Nance merchandise boutique store at Pebble. And he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's very much from that area, isn't he? I should have picked him instead. Would have been so much. (laughs) You would have had a higher chance, but less of a challenge. So we'll keep you posted. Hopefully Michael Bolton will be able to join us for a future episode, a special episode, like a full, you know, dedicated episode of spilled the tea to learning all things michael bolton which is all these people that are tuning in for golf will be like why are we listening i'm gonna say (laughs) that's that's what the listeners want amy (laughs) all right well we mentioned uh, a little bit earlier that we did get a chance to uh catch up with stacy lewis uh as we kind of shift gears here to what's happening this week uh in the game of golf uh, the Solheim Cup uh, getting underway. We got a chance to catch up with her with about all things uh, Solheim to learn a little bit more about Team USA. And she was pretty open and honest with us, we have to say. I mean, giving us a little um, preview of, you know, who might be, you know, the biggest diva, the most high maintenance on Team USA. So uh, you are not going to want to miss that interview coming up uh, just a little bit later in the pod. But before we dive in, we want to get you ready for the Solheim Cup with a little preview of where they're headed. First time the Solheim Cup is actually being played in Spain uh, at Finca Cortesan in Costa del Sol in Andalusia, Spain. I will be going over there, flying over just a few days from now. I have never been to Spain. Have you been to Spain? Are you familiar with yeah. these neck of the woods? Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the beauty of the UK, really. You're so close to continental Europe that Spain, Portugal, these were always sort of places that you can have a nice, cheap and cheerful holiday with sort of growing up. So, yeah, I've spent quite a lot of time in Spain. Um Yeah, I used to go on holiday there with family and friends. And I have to say the food is great. The weather is amazing. And bizarrely, I was thinking about this when it got announced about Finca Cortesan hosting the Solheim Cup. It's so strange how some things that you do in life just sort of come around full circle and and actually they return into relevancy. But when I hosted Golfing World, the show I did before Golf Channel, so this was maybe seven years ago, I did a three-day travel 
golf guide around southern Spain and uh, Finca Cortesan was one of the courses so I think we did Valderrama on the first day of course hosted the Spanish Open and the 97 Ryder Cup did uh, Alcadesa as well which is just a little bit further down the coast towards Gibraltar beautiful views Mm -hmm. and yeah we did Finca Cortesan so people might remember the course from hosting the world match play from 2009 to 2012 so it has been televised before some of the biggest names in the game have played this course and it really is beautiful it's tough it's sort of Mm dips in between two valleys it's quite exposed and you've got the wind sort of coming off the mountains but the driving range I'm sure we'll be seeing it in action is stunning it's sort of like this infinity driving range that looks out onto the Spanish hills and the Spanish Ooh. valleys it's yeah it is very challenging you've got a lot of raised tees um like I said very windy it's always kept in tournament condition I think because it is one of the most highly rated courses in Spain so when people come and they pay to play they're expecting a high, high end experience. And that's what you're going to get. So I do remember it being in gorgeous conditions. Um, it's going to be challenging, beautiful views. It's going to be fascinating. I think Spain is going to put on a good Solheim. What was the surrounding area like? I want to get the lowdown since I'm going to be heading over for a couple of days. Yeah, good question. My, do you remember my, what, my like any restaurants or things to do or see or anything? I do remember we had a fair bit of sangria, some nice paella, okay. as they pronounce it <laughs> <Of> over <course>. Spain. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think you're quite central to some sort of nearby towns, restaurants. Um, you will find plenty to do. Don't worry okay. about that. I think awesome. Spain always delivers when it comes to that those kind of holiday vibes. The, the also the um, the hotel is award winning. There's a great spa on site as well, Amy. I doubt you'll get the time. But I'm you not never going know. To see that. <laughs> no, um, but I, yeah, we, we could. To Stanford on uh, Golf Central this week, last week actually, and she uh, she said that she'd heard that the hotel and and the resort is stunning, and it really really is. So I think uh, all the girls are going to get looked after really well. All right, Miss Anna. Well, you seem to know everything about this year's everything. Solheim Cup venue, but I want to see how well you really know this Solheim Cup. So we are going to quiz mm. you. I have a couple little questions I've come up with to see how well you really oh, know the Solheim Cup. Okay, so first one. Yeah. Okay. Team Europe, they are trying to go for three in a row this mm-hmm. year. How mm-hmm. many consecutive Solheim Cups have been won before by Team Europe? What's the most that they have been able to win? Hmm. Well, based on the fact that one of the big storylines for this year is <laughs> I think and I just Europe. gave it away. <laughs> and Europe go for the three P <laughs> for the first time. I'm probably going to say they've only won it twice back to back, haven't they? Okay, so that one doesn't count, and I really sound like an idiot for asking that. <laughs> no, well, because I was looking at big, the big storylines, and it's, you know, we've got like five Swedes playing for Team Europe. They've never done the three-peat before. So I'm, I'm assuming twice is the most amounts of consecutive editions they've won. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant, Anna Jackson. Yes. So smart. Okay, so Team Europe has done it twice. They've won back-to-back in 2011 and 2013. And, of course, we know uh, 2019 and 2021 as they look to go for three in a row. Okay, Mm. biggest comeback in Solheim Cup history? Mm. Good question. Do you know, I think I know this, but I only know this because I went to the Solheim that year and – it was the year of all it was the year of all the drama wasn't it i think was it germany and it was when yes. suzanne yes. it was when suzanne didn't give alison yes. lee and they came back on sunday with so much pent up anger <laughs> they just destroyed <laughs> europe on sunday was that that was a huge comeback was that the biggest comeback that was the biggest comeback yep that was 2015 in germany us trailed 6 to 10 Going into the Sunday singles, and yeah. as you mentioned, Suzanne Pedersen just giving Team USA all kinds of bulletin board material, not giving that putt to uh, Allison Lee. She, of course, was crying, as you mentioned, huge controversy that year, but the U.S. using that as a fire, they came uh, roaring back, uh, ended up winning 14 and a half to 13 and a yeah, half. Yeah, that was brutal. Do you know, huge. we were meant to be interviewing Allison the day before the first day of the Solheim Cup and she was so nervous as a rookie that she couldn't Mm -hmm. she she cancelled the interview because she was so nervous that she couldn't sort of speak in front of camera she didn't want to do any media and then 
for all of that to unfold and for her to be under such scrutiny and oh my gosh I actually felt really sorry for her I think Suzanne regrets all of that we know she does but she's also just so passionate which is why she's going to be such a great captain this year but yeah that was drama oh yes okay my third and last trivia question the first U.S. Solheim Cup team who competed at Lake Nona in Orlando, mm. Florida. How many Hall of Famers were on that U.S. team? Hmm. Hmm. This is a complete stab in the dark. <laughs> it must be quite a few others. It was you, you wouldn't be asking me. Yes. Um, I don't know. Seven? Seven out of 12? Close. Five. Five Ooh. Hall of Famers. Plus the captain, Kathy Whitworth was the captain that year. So six ended up in the Hall of Fame. You had Nancy Lopez, Pat Bradley, Beth Daniel, Betsy King, Patty Sheehan, and then of course, uh, Kat, Kathy Whitworth leading the That's, way. Isn't that so cool? Just to have all those legends in one yes. team. Like little did we ever know at the time. Yes. Too cool. Very cool. Good quiz, Amy. Good Thank quiz. You. you did fine. You did pretty hey, good. I'm, a, I'm, I'm good with that performance. I'm happy with that. <laughs> well, we talked a little bit about Stacey Lewis a few minutes ago. She could end up in the hall someday. I mean, she's got a couple majors, a lot yeah, of wins. Sure. And obviously, uh, we'll see how she fares as Solheim Cub captain. She's got a stab at it this year. Uh, again, next year, four times she was a member of Team USA. And, you know, we talked about the intensity of Suzanne Patterson. It can only be matched by somebody like Stacey Lewis. She mm -hmm. is another one that's been kind of a serious and intense player for uh, American golf in recent years. One of the few Americans to reach uh, number one in the women's game. But, you know, as you're going to hear in our interview with her, she's going to take a little bit of a different approach. I don't think Captain Lewis is going to be so much like player Lewis. And uh, we had a chance to uh, talk with the captain just a few weeks ago. She was making the media rounds and you're going to be able to hear it in her voice. She's, she sounds a little froggy. She's been doing a lot of talking, <laughs> but uh, here's our interview uh, with Captain Stacey Lewis. All right. Well, let's welcome in our guest to this episode of Spill the Tea. We are joined by two-time back-to-back U.S. Solheim Cup captain, Stacey Lewis. Stacey, I do not know how you juggle it all. You still have your playing career. You're a mom. And now to be Solheim Cup captain, what's been the most fun about juggling it all? Um, I don't know if I'd call the juggling fun, um, but I just, I do it. You know, I get through it and the most fun about the whole experience was getting to tell these picks yesterday that um, that they made the team. I mean, that's that's been the most fun. Just to think you're you're checking things off of their goal list. You're making careers. You're you know, it's just it's really cool when you think back a big picture and put yourself in their shoes and remember what that experience was like for you. And to get that to do to do that for them was really really special. And Stacey, I mean, I'm sure this is a time period in your career, unlike any other, as Amy mentioned, you're balancing so much, but looking mm -hmm. at your career and your life, you know, you've been in the spotlight for so many years, I think as fans and as, mm -hmm. you know, as, as supporters of Stacey Lewis, we feel like we know you pretty well professionally. We followed your mm -hmm. career for such a long time, but away from the game, we mm -hmm. would love to know Stacey Lewis a little bit better, sort of what makes you tick, what makes you laugh, what annoys <laughs> you, your sort of must haves on the road, of course, mm -hmm. uh, your husband, Jared, Chadwell is doing phenomenal stuff with the Aggies over on the women's mm -hmm. golf team. Golf is a huge part of your household. How do you escape from the game? How do you walk away from golf and get a little bit of respite at home? When um, when you go pick up a little four-year-old at daycare, golf is completely out of my head. Um, it's amazing to, I mean, I think of times girls were like, oh, I was looking at the pinchy last night before I came to the course. And I was like, I didn't look at the pin sheet till I got on the first tee. <laughs> um, so it's um, my daughter. I mean, she's created so much balance in my life right now. It's um, it's amazing just to to think back of where I was ten years ago, where golf was everything. I mean, it was it determined when I went to bed. It determined whether I did something or not. Fun. I mean, golf was everything, and I don't regret it. You know, I got to accomplish some really amazing things, but now, I mean, seeing my little, that little girl light up when I walk into the room, I mean, I'm done. Golf, golf is not even in the picture. 
It's so funny that you say that, Stacey. I mean, I've got a little two-year-old and Amy, your little guy, Jack, is four, I think, Four or well. two, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just in terms of what you say about preparing for things, I mean, I've always been such a thorough preparer for all shows on Golf Channel and throughout my whole life. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you've got a little one in the room, I mean, sometimes you rock up to show 15 minutes before going on air and you've barely even looked at the rundown just because there's been so much going on at home. How do you think that sort of affected <clears throat> your performance on the course as well? Just not being able to physically do as much preparation as you have been yeah I mean of all the things I'm trying to do right now the golf is the thing that has probably suffered the most um and I wish I would play better but I'm also 38 years old with a rod in my back and sometimes the body just doesn't want to practice you know and the practice is a lot shorter when I'm home because of my body more than because of my daughter or because of Solon Cup or whatever. So um, I'm at a point where I have to listen to my body and what my body says. And um, and that's okay. I mean, I've, I've accomplished so much in this game and I feel like my role is different on tour right now. Um, and I do feel like if I get on the right golf course, I still feel like I got a chance to win. I know I don't have a rod in my back, but I certainly start feeling those aches and pains a little bit more than I used to, especially when you're schlepping suitcases across the country. And I've seen you before in the airport traveling with your daughter, with the stroller. I don't know how physically, how do you do it? I mean, with traveling, I know mm -hmm. Brittany Lincecombe, you know, she's traveling with kids. She's talked about having 11 suitcases. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I know I've got some crazy travel stories with my son uh, any crazy chesney travel stories that you could share with us oh my gosh i mean well i think back to when she was little and we would get on airplanes and just asleep you know as soon as that plane started going up to sleep i mean now we don't sleep it's a four-hour <laughs> flight we're awake the whole time we gotta have entertainment the whole time um i mean the worst was a a total blowout when she was dead asleep <laughs> yes. oh no so I learned to travel with, I always travel with clothes for her, but now I travel with clothes for myself as well. Stacy, you are speaking my language for any friends who are having newborns that I'm so nervous to travel with them. No, that is the easiest possible time you could yeah, travel with The easiest is when they're the smallest, you know, that two, three, four, when they start wanting to move, that's when it gets hard. But um, yeah, we've, I've gotten creative. I mean, Justin has slept in bathrooms and closets and just wherever you can make the place dark, um, you just make it work. And I mean, traveling with little seats so that she can sit in there and eat her little food when she was small. I mean, you just try to make it as much like home as possible. Um, but you do it on the road and she's done amazing. Like, I mean, it's just been so fun to watch her grow up and she's probably more excited about Swollen Cup than I am, you know, just getting to hang out with all the girls and be in the team room. So um, it's just, I mean, I mean, what a time that she not, she's not going to remember it all, but she's going to remember parts of this as she gets older. And, um, you know, she's been all over the world and it's pretty amazing. Speaking of being all over the world. Now, Anna just traveled back from the UK with Max, who we just talked about. It's just two. Have you thought about how you're going to be getting Chesney over to Spain? Is she going to make the trip? I mean, what's sort of that process going to be like mm -hmm. for you? Oh and yeah, jet lag as well. She is coming. She's coming, and um, the daycare ladies are coming with the tour, so oh, they're nice. going to be my biggest help. And my husband will be there as a helper, so he'll be there too. So it's a. My parents are going to be there. I mean, it's going to be a total family affair. And I, you know, I've had when I got this captaincy, I I called my husband, I called my parents, and I told them, I said, I'm going to need help. Like I can't do this by myself are you guys on board? And they all immediately said yes. And, and they've been awesome. So, so far throughout. Yeah, just incredible. You are an absolute super mama. And the couple of weeks that you've got coming up are just going to be memories of a lifetime, Stacey. Mm -hmm. We've got, we've got some sort of quick fire questions for you okay. that just to dive a little bit deeper. And the, they okay. start with uh, Stacey and they move on, on over to TBUSA. So we're just okay. going to start with our spill it questions, questions that maybe we think that maybe you haven't been asked before. So you've okay. just had three captain's picks, but what are three mm -hmm. things on the road that Stacey Lewis can't live without? Three things on the road. Um, I need to find a gym to work out mm. at. Um, I don't need to hold on anymore. Um, 
well, I guess you need your golf clubs, right? If you're going to play. <laughs> um, Correct. I do like a, a diffuser, though, for some oils and things like oh. that when, I, when we sleep. My daughter likes that, too. So we do that when we travel. That's a good chat. Uh, and a white noise machine as well. I'd oh, yeah. Throw in there. Yeah. And a nightlight. Got to have that, too. So it's kind of scary, you know? <laughs> All right, Stacy. next one. If you could have just one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Burger and fries. Oh. <laughs> Easy. Any What's on the burger? Chain? Is it plain? Anything. Anything. Yeah. Nothing specific. Just that's always my go-to. Like when I'm out of the country and I come back, um, that's, it's always burger and fries for some reason. I don't know why. Anywhere in particular? Do you have a favorite yeah. place? No, not really. You'll take any burger and fries. Number, and number two, on. number two would be Mexican food. So oh, go. good choices like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As Amy knows, I'm very partial to a taco. <laughs> um, yeah. Stacy, now your name is obviously Stacy Lewis, but if that's not, if that wasn't your name, anything that you wish your name had been, anything that you wish your uh, parents had actually named you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't, just Stacy with an E. Everybody wants to put an E in my name. Mm. <laughs> I Avoid just the type of spelled all the time. I get that too. Is there a D in Rogers or not? Like Aaron Rogers, yeah. you know, they just want to put the D in there. It just it doesn't yeah. work. Okay. Yeah. Now we want to get to know the US team a little bit better. We want to get to know your team members. So okay. first off, who would you fear most if you had to face a member of your own team in the singles matches? Willie Vu. Mm. Why is that? She I mean, she doesn't care where she's playing or if she's the underdog or if she's a favorite. Um, she's such a good putter. She's a clutch putter. Um, and that's that would be who I would fear. This might be connected to the next question then. Whose game would you most like to have out of the team that you've got? Oh, I wish I could hit it far like Nelly. Hmm. Uh, yeah, probably, probably Nelly. I just, I would like to know what it's like to just hit it that far for one day. <laughs> Who is the funniest player on the U.S. team? Well, everybody's going to say Angel, but Allie Ewing is sneaky funny. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have guys, guessed her. You no. just got to spend a little time with her. She's got some good one-liners. I love that. Now, you don't have to answer this. You can dodge this one. But biggest diva on Team USA, Stacey, what do you think? Oh, <laughs> and it most demanding, anyone who needs a specific amount of ice cubes in their water or needs a particular mm -hmm. color of towel. Needs a banana all the time. Weird <laughs> snacks. You know what? We got a much easier crew this time. If I had to pick one, I'd pick Danielle. But I'd tell her <laughs> I was picking her. What is she most in need of all the time? I don't know. It's always something. <laughs> um, how about the most superstitious? You know, I don't even know. Some are superstitious and you don't even know it. I don't know. I mean, we've got such easy personalities this time. Um, I don't know. I don't know who I would pick, to be honest. No, maybe you'll find out by the end of the week. I know. And then I'll know always... more by the end. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the Solheim Cup has become a quite a sort of a colourful celebration, I think. But what do you hate the most, Stacey? Ribbons, face paint, or nail polish? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the ribbons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't mind be... the face... I don't mind the nail polish. I don't mind the face paint. I just I think we're a little bit we're a little bit older for than the ribbons. Yeah, we'll Are leave we gonna... that to we'll leave that to Chesney. Yeah, Are we going to see some ribbons. face paint then? Maybe some crazy nails over the week? Oh, I know they're all going to show up with crazy nails. I do know <laughs> that. That is a given. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know about the face paint, but definitely the nails. Well, as we talked at the beginning, you have a lot on your plate. I know you've said you're looking forward to just letting loose when this is all over, just having a little fun. What does letting loose look like for Stacey Lewis? What do you like to do to just get away from it all? Um, gosh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, any, I mean, I see at Solheim Cup, I mean, we're going to have, I want music playing all the time. I want things loose. I mean, I think Stacy as a captain is going to look a lot different to people than Stacy as a player. Um, 
at least that's what I'm going to try to per- portray to my players. You know, I can get too intense and I know you can read my facial expressions at times. So it's something that, you know, I'm going to work hard on is just being really positive with them and, um, you know, just being, just trying to keep it loose. I mean, I think you, you get tight in this thing and golf gets really hard, really fast. And so, um, we just got to keep them loose, got to keep it fun. And, um, you know, if they want to go to the pool and enjoy the Finca resort, I want them to go do it. You know, I want them to enjoy this experience and, and be able to let loose a little bit. Okay, Stacey. Well, Team USA, they win the Solheim Cup. You hit the bar, you celebrate. What are you ordering? Um, we will pour anything in that cup that fits. <laughs> um, so let's get, I, I would probably start with beer so we don't end the night too poorly. <laughs> Starting off slow, pacing yourself yes, like a, yes. a true captain. Yes. Well, Stacey Lewis, we appreciate you spending some time with us, getting to know you a little bit and uh, best of luck to uh, you and your U.S. team getting you to that celebratory beer at the end of these matches. Uh, thank you for uh, spending a little time with us and spilling the tea, Stacey Lewis. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. We learned so much about Stacey Lewis. I mean, things we didn't know. I mean, she said hamburgers and French fries were kind of her go-to when she can't find <laughs> yeah, anything that's else quite to Stacey. eat. That's quite Stacey. <laughs> and like nothing in the burger, just a straight up plain straight meat up. bun. <laughs> yeah. And then the moment, I mean, so many parents could relate to, I mean, the diaper blowout situation on the plane and now bringing extra clothes. I mean, you, yeah. I can't even imagine what that must have been like. Like I had this moment with Jack one time, my son um, on a plane, and he was that kid who would not stop crying, oh, would not stop God. crying on the plane, no matter what I did. I'm trying to, you know, mix him up a bottle and, and trying, he will not stop. No matter, I am like sweating. <laughs> profusely because you just you're, you feel like you're like that burden and then you know the people that don't understand or giving you evil looks and glares which, which you know? who are those people by the way seriously I know, get I know. to the back of the plane i have no time for that have a child you know what it's like to be in that situation yeah. and as soon as we pulled into the gate and the lights came on stop crying <laughs> and everybody just chuckled <laughs> It's, I know, it's so stressful. And actually, I've equally had a very similar blowout experience with that oh, no. to the point where Tom and I, we, we had to throw everything in and we got back home that night. It was like 2 a.m. And I look at Tom's socks and they are covered in Max's oh, juju. Oh, no. <laughs> it was just, oh, no. I mean, every mom's been there. It's the beauty of motherhood. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Well, before we wrap up this podcast, let's talk a little bit more about the Solheim Cup. We touched on this a few minutes ago with our trivia question. Some of the more controversial and intense moments from the Solheim Cup involving Suzanne Pedersen. But there's been some, you know, real highlights through the years, too. What are some of the Solheim Cup memories that that really stand out to you? You know, actually, that Pedersen 2015 Germany was was one of them because in yes. recent times I can't remember things getting that heated no. and coming into today with with such such fire in both teams. But actually, of course, obviously I'm biased towards Europe in this personal situation. But it's another Peterson memory. It's 2019. Yeah. It's the final match out on the course. It's 13 and a half to 13 and a half. They're all square. Marina, Alex. Uh, Suzanne Pettersson, and what do you know? She has the putt of her life. Sinks it seven foot left to right, clinches the Solheim Cup for Europe. It was just one of the most like thrilling sporting scenes I have seen in a long, long time. It was the ultimate mic drop from Pettersson. Retires, what, a few days later she announces it. And uh, it, I just don't think Solheim's can get much better than that. It, the final putt on the final day, with the Ryder Cup and the Solheim, you don't get many additions like that. Just no. so, so good. I'm with you. I picked the exact same two moments. Right. Both involving Suzanne Pedersen, which makes me super excited for this Solheim Cup and the next one, knowing that she's going to be captain because she does have that like excitement and that intensity. It's like she's yeah. just built uh, for this type of event. And I'm so anxious to see, I was reading through some of her transcripts, uh, for a piece that I'm working on. And she's saying a lot of the similar things that we heard from Stacy Lewis, you know, she's become a parent now too. She has two children, just like Stacy has her daughter. And she says that, you know, 
you know, I've simmered a little. I've kind of mm-hmm. mellowed out, you know, from the play no. scene. And she's like, I'm going to be a little <laughs> bit more fun. And, and I'm like, no, you know, there's no way. Um, you know, I feel like when you get them in that environment, you know, I just, I, I can't imagine those two like dancing together on the first tee. Like we ended up seeing from like Julie and Annika. It's, no, just, it's not no. going to happen. And, and if there are any rules controversies with those two, there is no yeah. way either one of them is going to stand down. Like, this could be an epic Solheim Cup just involving these two. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the leadership is really exciting. And also the teams, we've got so many new faces, especially mm-hmm. on the American teams with Lilia Vu. Well, she's just been knocked off as world number one yesterday. But I mean, she's still going to be such a strong player. Alison Corpus, these are rookies, but they're major champion rookies. Yes. Roseanne as well. I mean, she's played so much team golf coming up through college. It's going to be really interesting, I think, what Lexi Thompson does. Obviously, just massively struggling in form, but she's one of the veterans of this team yes. now. Um, and then over on the European side as well, you've got numerous rookies. I mean, Celine Boutier, not a rookie, but she's going to be hopefully up there with Charlie Hull as the leaders of this team. Leona McGuire as well. Her record is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then you've got Lynn Grant and Maya Stark, who have played so much team golf together from Sweden. It's just there's so many storylines. The teams are, re- I think the teams are really evenly matched. Mm-hmm. Um, the captains are going to be fantastic. The course is great. I just can't see how we're not going to be in for a great solo home. Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm glad we got a chance to speak uh, one-on-one with Captain Stacey Lewis for this podcast and get some of her insights and, of course, share uh, a little bit of ours. And, of course, Golf Channel will have complete Solheim Cup coverage uh, getting underway. I will be making the trip over, reporting on-site starting on Tuesday, September 19th. And, of course, it all gets underway on that Friday, the 22nd. So grab your coffee, get up early, watch some golf, uh, those foursome matches getting started um, on that Friday morning. So. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll be in studio as well, so we will be we will be talking on air. Amazing! <laughs> I can't wait. wait. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I'm gonna have to check out this uh, this this city. I mean, you made it sound like it's gonna be pretty amazing. Some of the views look pretty spectacular from the photos yeah. I've seen online. So. Get a traditional paella. I bet when you order it, you can't say paella. You gotta say paella. And, paella. Uh, <laughs> no, paella. And a, and a jug of sangria, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> Hopefully the six years of Spanish that I took between high school and college, I can finally put to use after all these years. (laughs) All the tapas, all the tapas will be so good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for this second edition of Spill the Tea. Be sure to check us out on all the major podcast platforms on Golf Channel's YouTube and, of course, at NBCSports.com slash golf. Anna Jackson, great to see you and chat as always. See you next time. See you next time.